Welcome back, everybody, to Just Blazer Programming. And today, we're going to be discussing the um, ASP.NET Identity API uh, that comes with the, your Blazor server. And that is the thing that is uh, used for our authorization authentication. So if you have not seen my last video, go check it out. Um, <laughs> in that video, we actually do create the simplest way of creating a Blazor server with auth authentication authorization. It had no roles, it had no claims, it had no policies in it. So my next video or the video I'm planning on doing that's related to all this is going to dive into the policies, claims, and uh, roles because without them, then your application is kind of sucks and it's not very dynamic and, and not very good. But this video is going to be about the database portion of it, at least the portion that we care about when we create them. So the way this works, at least the default way, is that we use Entity Framework in order to do the work for us. And this is known as, at least in this case, for the for how uh, Microsoft uh, has a default project set up. This is known as a code first approach. Code first means that you basically write all the code. It sounds it's exactly what it sounds like. You write all the code for your tables to be created from the code, and then they get generated in your um, in your database itself. So you have all your tables created with all the columns you want, along with all the relationships that you want. If you don't know what uh, a foreign key is, basically this is how you um, tie two tables together with this value. So in this case, this table, ASP.NET role claims has a foreign key of whatever name. And that foreign key is actually the ID of the ASP.NET roles table. So I go to the ASP.NET roles table. It's using and it's not user roles. Where are you here? It's using the ID of it right here. So this video is really not for those of you who already know the database stuff or know any framework. And it's not going to dive into Entity Framework itself. We're just going to go over what is important for us when we go into our own Blazor authentication, authorization, at least when it comes to using Blazor Server. So the first thing is that it is a code based uh, code first approach. You are creating your tables off of this class here using Entity Framework and all that stuff. And um, what happens is that you auto generate, it says it up here, this migrations like uh, uh, this, well, in this case, is a snapshot, but that's not what I want. What I want is this here. Here. Creates this basically. This is the designer. So this is what actually is going to create our, uh, our tables. So everything here, is what's going to be used for those tables. And that's what you see in the end is all those tables get created with all the comms and all the comms have these names. And then these are a reflection of the SQL conventions. So basically it's just translating that code into something that SQL understands as the basics of that. And this is auto generated, So you don't have to worry about knowing how to write all this. The problem that I see is, is that when you do a, just as a, something to keep in mind when you go into production, although you could do it this way, it does blow up the program quite a bit and it does cost a lot of resources to try to do this. So this is why people don't like using uh, Entity Framework that much. They like using Entity Framework maybe for some of its, um, for some capabilities it allows you to do, but um, code first approach is kind of, uh, at least using this way is not very optimal. There is the other way, which is called database first, which is the reverse. Essentially you create your tables first and then through scaffolding or in, in or basically you running a .NET command, you can bring in those tables into your source and then they will be created into uh, classes as long as you've modeled them together. Now, Entity Framework can do this, but because Entity Framework, all, you know, it's really, it's kind of a heavy process. People might opt for third party uh, ways of dealing with that, like AutoMap or Dapper or something like that. But that is a different topic for a different time. And that delves in something way deeper than what Blazor does or what we care about in our case. So I'm not going to get into that. I'm just give, telling you that there is a code first approach that uses any framework. That's the default of the identity schema that we are using here, especially uh, when it comes to Blazor server. And in case you didn't know, when it comes to Blazor server, you are kind of stuck with using ASP.NET Core identity. 
So that's why it's uh, uh, off the bat. You have to kind of already understand this and you can make changes to it, but it's just that you are stuck with, with this basically. Not with this, with not with like Entity Framework on its own. You could change it and stuff like that. You could use other ways, but you still have to use the actual, um, like when it comes to the policies and the roles and a lot of stuff, that, that works the same. And you're, you're kind of stuck with that. So the next thing I want to dive into is for you guys who do not know how SQL works. So basically this is kind of like the mini Entity Framework, mini SQL explanation and essentially what we have here is a bunch of tables that get generated that you didn't do any of this uh this was brought into the um this was part of the base program that gets created and all this is doing is creating a bunch of tables that you might use in the future especially when it comes to roles and uh, when it comes to roles claims not policies policies are not done here policies are done in code uh, so it basically the things that you care about, at least for the very basic policies and roles and claim stuff that we are working with are going to be the tables that have roles users. Uh, I don't think we'll be using logins. I'm not sure though. Let me check. No, we're not. It's just, uh, users, the roles and the claims. Those are the, the, the three tables I believe that we'll be using mostly. And all these extra tables here is if you want to essentially um, uh, normalize your SQL table. So your tables are normalized, which is a SQL concept that state that's basically saying that you split your tables and those tables have relationships so that your data isn't flat. AKA you have a bunch of data in one table. So making a change to that table makes it much harder for you to program around. That's essentially what that is. Now, I know that's a horrible explanation to those of you out there who are DBAs and full stack developers that are much better at SQL than I am, but that is the basic thing that's happening here and why there are so many tables that were created and why you get tables like ASP.NET role, ASP.NET user claims, ASP.NET role claim, like all that stuff. That's because they're trying to normalize these tables are following a SQL uh, best practice, basically. But for us, we don't care about that. We just want the simplest things possible. And for that, we just need three tables, the user, the roles, and the claims. And with that, we could handle everything else, basically. And obviously the, uh, well, not obviously, but policies are not done here. Policies are done in code. And you'll see that when I get into the video that it's all about the policies and claims and roles and stuff. So that's really all I wanted to get into today. Like there wasn't, um, I thought about it because I'm working on it right now. I'm working on that, uh, the, that new video that is for those the policies and stuff like that um and i remember that there's a lot of people that do ask a lot of questions especially when we deviate off blazer concepts and unfortunately in order for you to really understand authorization and authentication i feel that you at least have to understand some of the database related stuff that you encounter because you will be pulling your data from there uh, using authentication authorization now the simplest blazer method that i showed you in that other video did not require you to understand any of that because everything was done for you, but you did not have the ability to use roles or pop or you didn't have the ability to use roles. You didn't have the ability to get users. And that's kind of a useless uh, uh, authentication piece basically, because you're not making uh, calls to the database and you're not using the roles or the authorization in a dynamic way where in a way that's actually useful for a project to have like different roles or, and without roles, you can't have claims because you need claims or, you know, yeah, you need, uh, you need claims to be, uh, for the user and then roles are needed for the authorization piece for the project overall. But I digress. We'll get into that in that next video. Here is just to explain what's happening in the back end and why it's happening, like why these tables and the most important thing basically is like the foreign keys. And that's essentially just that the tables are connected to each other through uh, one of them is connected to another one through the use of a, of a column, whatever that column might be. And that this is a code first approach, which means that we're building our tables here in code. And then it gets generated by entity framework. It does a bunch of stuff that might bloat the program a little bit, which is a different discussion for a different time, but eventually you will get your tables here. And then through that, now we have, a pipeline ready to go. 
for us to actually add the roles and stuff like that. So we could pull data, use the data, authorize that data. And then we have a viable working model for something in production. And that's what I wanted to convey. It, this was really just for those of you who don't have that much SQL experience and you don't really need to know that much about SQL. You just need to know that we're using SQL to get data and that data is organized in a certain way and that we're building it out of our code. That's all you gotta know. Apart from that, that's all there is for today. Don't worry, I'm still working on that other piece. In fact, this is my, uh, my testing program right now, but I realize that there are a lot of people out there that might not have this knowledge and I just wanna make sure that you have some baseline stuff before we get into the next video because we might get into something like this and that might cause some questions. So without further ado, thank you very much. And thanks for your patience. Like, subscribe, give me a comment, do all that stuff. And I'll see you later. Peace out.